Seven tips for losing weight with PKU. Number one, always make sure that you consult with your dietitian or clinic team first and let them know what your plans are moving forward. If you have a good clinic team, then it's likely they'll be able to give you some tips, maybe some information, but also maybe some food selection ideas based on limiting calories and maybe more nutritional dense foods that will hopefully make you fuller. Your clinic and dietitian team should have a wealth of knowledge and would have already helped and supported other PKU patients who may, in the past, have attempted weight loss as well. In fact, this was the first step that I took when looking to lose weight in the past, probably about four to five years ago. Number two, always weigh your foods. It sounds silly, but we easily easily underestimate how much we're eating and so portion control is massively important or just simply just to pour a little bit more over a period of time and before you know it you're six months a year two years down the line and your bowl or plate of food has gone from this size to maybe 10 15 40 percent bigger and it's that that over a period of time will make us put on weight also, weighing our foods can sometimes help us understand the density of our food. And for me, when I started doing this, it was super useful. It allowed me to get my food quantity under control. And I didn't realize actually how much I was consuming. So for me, it took a long time. It's not instant. It's not a quick learning process or it wasn't for me, but it was super helpful. I just had to get in the mindset that it had to take some time for me to learn about weighing food and the different types of food. And Number three, consider tracking your food, also planning it in advance. So what I mean by that is tracking your food via a food journal, maybe writing it down, um, using your phone, as in using the notes section to document how much and what you're eating, or download food tracking apps I use my fitness pal, which for me is really helpful. It allows me to scan food. It allows me then to log the food, but also it allows me to plan it in the future. And what I mean by that is if let's just say I break my meals into three and two snacks, let's just say that's actually what I do. But then let's say the night before I can log what food I'm going to have for breakfast. I can also make plans and log that food for lunch. And then also for dinner and snacks as well. It does take a bit of an advanced planning. And when I look back in hindsight, if I would have told myself this, that I was going to do this, I would have said, no way. There's no way I'm going to do that. I don't have time for that. The truth is, though, though it takes a little bit extra time, it is really useful because I can start tracking and understanding the calories that I'm consuming, the type of food that I'm consuming and how much, especially if I incorporate it with step number two, right? Weigh my food. The benefit of logging your food for the future is that also it can, and again, this can be difficult for some personality types, but what it can do is remove that emotional eating. So if you're feeling really stressed out, and maybe you want to turn to the cookie box or to the snacks or chocolate or whatever it may be, that emotional response hopefully can be diminished if you are strict and plan your food in advance. For me, it helps. I know for some people who are maybe quite emotional eaters, that's a challenge. Um, but listen, for me, logging my food and tracking that food in advance was super useful. Now, it doesn't mean that I plan every meal. I don't anymore. Um, I am able then in the moment to make decisions based on um, what I've got available, but also I still log it. That's the thing. And I still stick to whatever calorie limit I have at that particular moment. But when I first started out, I was really, really regimented, really strict. Number four, always get your protein. Hey, listen, we're on a low protein diet anyway, aren't we, right? So we are getting our protein from different sources compared to other individuals who don't have PKU. But regardless, the advice for them would be the same. You have to get your protein in because that protein 
will give you the energy that you need. And if you're getting it from a PKU protein drink or formula or tablets or whatever it might be, not only are you getting that, you're getting all the other amino acids and vitamins that your body needs to give you the energy to do what you want to do. So you're trying to lose weight and there may be times when it can become quite difficult. Feeling hungry is going to be a problem for you. And it was for me as well. So my first, always first point of consideration is protein supplement formula, whatever you call it. For me, it's PKU sphere. That's what I take. But I will maybe incorporate that into a smoothie in order to maybe utilize it as a snack. If you skip your protein supplement, not only will you not get the vitamins and the amino acids and the overall protein that your body needs to function, but you'll also maybe get super hungry over a period of time. And that can easily turn into consuming snacks, carbohydrates, all those extra calories that are going to put on the weight over a period of time. So protein supplement, protein drink, whatever it is, make sure you're getting enough and make sure you're actually taking it. Also, try to have your protein drink or tablets over a period of time. So space it out throughout the day. So hopefully then you're not so hungry at different points of the day. It's difficult to be consistent over a long period of time when you're hungry, right? So protein, protein, protein. Five, and this one may suck for some people, liquid calories. If I was able to visit myself 10 years ago and I would say to myself, you know, stop consuming liquid calories. At the time I was drinking fizzy drinks, in particular Coke, full fat Coke, because, hey, I've got PKU, right? I can't have Diet Coke. So if I would have told myself that, I would never have believed that it would be something that I could just drop and leave. It was a part of my everyday consumption, really. But now I have no fizzy drinks. And actually, what I found is by dropping the fizzy drinks, it's actually really difficult to go back now. It's been a long time, so maybe that's why. The thing is, though, if we can imagine our stomach, if we're filling it with liquid calories, it's actually not filling us up that much, really. Food is obviously denser, more nutritional for our bodies, right? So that's going to take up more space. And this, this is how I envisioned it in my head anyway. The more space I took up with food, then the more fuller I feel. If I am drinking sugary drinks and it's not taking up that much space, I'm going to feel hungrier over a period of time. And also they're high in calories as well, right? So now really, to be honest, I just drink water and I have maybe a few cups of tea throughout the day, green tea, red berry tea, chamomile tea, or just regular. Um, I do though with regular tea have pro zero with it as well, but you know, you're talking small amounts. And the reason why this has been really useful for me is because I don't want to waste calories on drinks that are not going to make me feel full. And if I'm on a weight loss program, hunger is going to be the number one thing that's going to derail me. And so implementing this really, really helped. Now, it was it was tough at the start, right? I'm not going to lie because I'd been so used to drinking sugary drinks like Coke. I was kind of dependent on it. Um, there were definitely cravings there, right? So as I was starting to reduce that or get rid of it, it was tough. But for me anyway, because I was able to see that through and get to the other side, there are no cravings anymore. They're gone completely. And so now I feel more in control. And if, if thinking of long-term weight loss, being in control is the right approach, really. It's the right, it's the right position that we kind of want to be in. There are obviously lower calorie drinks. Um, out there, obviously, we have to be a bit careful in terms of aspartamine, aspartamine, that word, that it doesn't have that because if it has that, we can't have that. Number six, move more. I watched a podcast recently. 50% of people overestimate their movement. 50% of people underestimate their calorie intake. 50% is a large number. If we make that mistake, we can see why it's so easy to put on weight over a period of time. What I found for me was because I had an office job that my step ratio was really low. I never knew. I knew I didn't move a lot. But because I had never tracked my steps in any way, I had no idea. So 
just through reading and watching YouTube videos and trying to learn as much as possible. What I found was lots of people were out there saying, if you can get between kind of eight to 10,000 steps a day, then you're in a position where you're moving as much as you need to for your body. When I started tracking, and you can do this via your phone if it's in your pocket, a bit tougher with females because sometimes they don't have pockets depending on what they're wearing, Apple watches, Fitbit watches, whatever it might be. What I realized is when I started tracking how low my step ratio was, I was driving to work, I was sitting down, I would then leave and drive back home. And then also there'd be parts of the evening I'm sitting down too, right? So there just was no movement. As soon as I started incorporating walking and steps and was conscious about my step count, I noticed that not only one was I moving more, but two, the weight started to come off slowly, which was perfect. I then took it a bit further every time. I started to cycle to work. I started to exercise more. But I think actually, though, just tracking steps and walking and moving more is such a, a good starting foundation. And it's the one thing that if I don't train, then I have to make sure I try and get steps in. I've got a young family. I have a busy life like most of us it can be difficult to get that in. One of the things I realized was that um, if I could get a standing desk as well, it would allow more movement. It would allow more muscles to work, even if I'm just standing there and working. Also though, lunchtime, get out and go for a walk. And I also went and bought a treadmill so I could stand at my desk when I'm working remotely, so I can walk and work at the same time, depending on space, etc. Maybe just getting out in the morning um, or walking at lunchtime or just being more conscious of it so you can develop it into a really good healthy habit it worked for me number seven it is a marathon not sprint that sucks right because again if I would have visited myself at the start of this journey and I would have said you know this is going to take a long time it's a lifestyle all those types of comments I would have probably been a little a bit annoyed right the truth is, it is it is a marathon, not a sprint. We need to make sure that we're taking the time we need to lose weight consistently over a period of time because then it's more likely to stay off. Um, and the reason for that, I think, is because we are then developing habits that are sustainable. We're more likely to keep them going. If we just do it drastically, very quickly, those habits are not really cemented in our brains and we're not really practicing them over a long period of time. They can fall off. Also, though, this is super, super important for us with PKU. It has to be a slow process. If we lose weight too quickly, then we can go into a stage of being catabolic. And what that essentially means, or my understanding of this, is that we, we will turn in on ourselves and we'll start consuming our own bodies so consuming all those fat stores and that's essentially losing weight right our body knows it needs extra resources we're not giving it to it so it will turn in on itself consume that we'll lose weight the problem though is if we do that too quickly and too much our fee levels will increase because we would have gone catabolic our body releases fee into our system because we're losing weight too quickly so we need to be mindful that it needs to be a slow, slow process over a long period of time. It can suck because we're not seeing maybe the numbers drop as significantly as we would like, um, but it is better for us over a long period of time. You can then take an average over a long period of time. It's just better. It's harder though, if you're going to make comparisons to other people, especially if they don't have PKU because their protein level could be much higher, which means they maybe would lose weight quicker and they would maybe not feel as hungry as maybe us. So just be mindful. Don't go into a catabolic state. Do it slowly over, over a period of time. Now I'm in a position where habits are developed. They're implemented as part of my life. Yeah, I drop some off every now and then. I'm not perfect. Far from it. But what it does mean is I'm more likely to grab them and throw them back in. If everything happens too quickly, then it just doesn't work out in our favor. It's like long term gratification, isn't it? We're, we are living in a world where everything is based on short term gratification. Long term gratification means more. It makes us feel better and it's it's easier to stick to over a longer period of time. So. Slowly, slowly, slowly. 
So that's my seven points. There's a lot more, obviously, that we can discuss in future videos that I've used. If you could um, like the video, but also use the comments, if you don't mind, to one, ask questions, more than welcome to. Two, maybe share your tips and hints and um, tricks, maybe, let's say, to lose weight as well with PKU. The only other thing that I'll mention in this video is just try and keep motivated, utilize the community and the resources and the people that you know to motivate you as well. Um, you can definitely do it. Other people have as well. Just stay motivated, stay on it. And before you know it, the weight will be gone.